Hello everybody, welcome to Queer Games Heck Yeah for today. I'm pumped, I'm super pumped, I'm super psyched. I'm not, but I think you've got to fake it till you make it sometimes. And so I'm like, I am pumped, but I'm like a regular level amount of pumped, but I want to be like up here pumped for Queer Games Heck Yeah, because you deserve nothing less, he says, talking to the camera. And um, so yeah, I'm going to fake it till I make it for being super pumped. Ah, <sighs> alright, what are we here for? Why are we here? We're here to play games from the Queer Games Bundle, which is like right in the swing of things. Like we're in the middle of June, it's only available for like 40 days, 35 days, so you've kind of got to get on it if you want it. Um, and if you're watching this in the future, no wait, if I'm coming to you from the part, if you're watching this like after the bundle is gone, you can still get the games from the bundle. In fact, this game is free to play. What game is it? It's a game called Heart of Butter Blue, and it's a horror game. And I don't think we've played a horror story really on Queer Games. Heck yeah! Like we've played a couple, but we haven't really got to the horror part. I know that makes no sense, but we only have half an hour of each game, so a lot of games take a little while to get going. You know what I mean? And especially horror games because they're often about the mood. Um, so I'm kind of hoping we get like horror horror going because I've always wanted to make a horror game but I haven't because I don't think people would get it. They wouldn't get what I find horror. Um, partly because I'm like I would want to do it from the perspective of like horror for gay men. I don't quite know what that means just yet but I've kind of like I've kicked around a few ideas in my head a bit because I think horror kind of is about quite subjective in many ways. It's like it's sort of a lot of it based on the time where you are in your life, your life cycle as a like as a living thing. I think horror kind of affects you differently as you go through it, and I think depending on your, like maybe culturally where you are, what time period you're from, you know, horror changes, uh, and so there's not like a universal horror, but maybe there is. Like fear of the dark, that's kind of universal. Fear of drowning, I guess that's universal. Of course, I say that, but I'm sure if I Google it, there's a whole community devoted to drowning. <sighs> Yeah, because I always think back to like Year 10 Media Studies and we did the film Alien, uh, which is a pretty good horror film um, and a pretty pretty good title when you think about it. But it was like part of it is like, you know, it's about sort of the fear of being impregnated against your will kind of thing. And, um, you know, like the face huggers have that tube that, they, that it sticks down your throat and you can't breathe and that's where it lays the egg and then you give birth to the alien kind of thing. And I'm just like... My media teacher was a bit like, you know, and there's nothing more terrifying. And kind of like, yeah, I mean, maybe from a straight man's perspective, I guess. But for like half the people on the planet, it's called just like giving birth, having a child. Ah, <sighs> So yeah, horror, horror games. They're really, they're like a really great genre, I think. Because in fact, maybe are they, are they the genre? Like when we talk about genres, is it because horror has like defined this sort of blob slightly separate to just non-horror? I don't know where I'm going. I'm trying to stay pumped, people. Give me some, cut me some slack. Um, yeah, so horror is very interesting. I think from like a developer's perspective, horror horror gives you a lot of stuff for free. Like we talk about atmosphere in games, and we talk about like worldview, world building, and vibe. If you, if you make a horror game, you get a lot of stuff for free. Whereas if you're making a comedy or a sci-fi or a contemporary game, you kind of have to build out that stuff a bit more to get people to come with you a bit faster. But with horror, you know, the atmosphere is kind of built in. So I think it's very hard to make a bad horror game. Um, but then, of course, the flip side of that is it's like, how do you really elevate your horror game from like, you know, a 6 to an 8 to a 10? Maybe we'll find out with... <laughs> a heart of butter blue. For some reason, I'm struggling to remember that. It's because I've never seen the word butter blue. I hope. I wonder if it's a thing, but we'll find out. Um, once again, I don't know much about these games. I know this is a horror, so if you are not interested in that, turn away. Uh, but we'll try and not be too shocking or anything. Um, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, we're running this on Linux. Even though this is the Linux build, there was a big weird brown screen when I first turned, ran the game. So I think we could be in for some chop. Oh, that's from Aliens. Oh, damn it, that was almost a perfect, I don't know what you call it, callback or something. 
Um, yeah, I just want to get mentally into this game before we start. I kind of want to like enjoy the game, but I'm also looking for like stuff to talk about with it. Because, uh, you know, I don't want to just read them out. But let's start by reading it out. It had been a fairly average... It had been a, it had been fairly average the day that her father was murdered. Okay, off to a good start. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we're fine. I'm just not sure about the audio levels. Phoebe awoke? Phoebes? Phoebe. We'll st when she's in trouble, we'll call... Well, when they're in trouble, we'll call them Phoebe. But when it's just between us, we'll call them Phoebes. Okay, there's a bit of music. I might make the music a little louder. There we go. Bit of atmosphere for everybody. But not too much. Because we don't want to take away from the real star of this stream, which is my voice. Phoebes awoke on time, cooked her, father bre her father's breakfast, and then was told to mind the store. So she did. Oh, great art. I love this gradient. Customers didn't typically, typically arrive at her father's pawn shop until much later in the evening, or much earlier in the morning, for that matter. The typical client base tended to keep their company with the night. Oh, vampires. And where the store stood off the beaten path in one of the rougher areas of New Working City, it didn't get much foot traffic. I'm loving this season of Queer Games Heck Yeah. There's been a lot of fictional cities, and by a lot of, I mean like three. Um, Bellfall, from the game called Bellfall. Burger City from AS Only, and now New Working City, which I obviously could be real, but I don't, I've never heard of it. So I'm saying it's a fictional town, fictional city. And I'm kind of liking this sort of vibe. It's a little bit sort of dystopian, a little bit Blade Runner. Another early 80s sci-fi reference there. Maybe that's today's theme, other than the horror, is like <laughs> really specific science fiction references from like 1978 to 1980. So typically, there wasn't much for Phoebes to do. She swept the floor, wiped down the counters, and mostly just watched the front door. Sometimes she stood there for hours on end. Oh gosh! Sometimes she, sometimes as she stood there for hours on end, she would play a game with herself and try to form pictures out of the wood grain on the door. Oh, classic! Treating it like a little maze and seeing if there's a way through to the bottom of the door. Classic. And it was during one of these games on the oh-so-routine day that the door unroutinely opened. That's great, great line. And a man walked in, bright red eyes peeking out from under his hat. Oh, that's sinister. Phoebe stood up and greeted the customer as her father had instructed her to. Her father came out to meet the man. They had an appointment, her father had said, and that she was continue minding the store. The last thing he that was the the last thing he said to her. Before the two of them went back into the back, and Phoebe turned back to the door and her little secret game of her own. And so she stood, waiting and minding. Even when there was yelling, that was fairly routine. Some customers were more rowdy than others. And when those loud noises continued on and on, even when there was a particularly loud crack, Phoebe would know that this was the sound of a gunshot, if she would admit this to herself, and then silence. Hmm. She stood and stood. Hours went by and the sun went its routine way, just as Phoebe's went hers. Even when a sticky substance steeped out underneath the back door and stained her shoes because no one was there to tell her any differently and she was meant to do a good job. Uh oh. Eventually someone arrived. The police. They informed her of what she already knew but couldn't bring herself to truly know. Her father was dead. I'm loving these graphics. They're impressionistic but they're giving the vibe. The police worked quickly, sweeping from room to room, almost as if this was routine for them. Good, Phoebe would think to herself. It is good when your day goes by routinely. Okay, I'm loving that we're getting f a bit of a vibe from Phoebes. They found nothing. Like, I wonder if she's on, she's on a spectrum of some kind. So just as quickly as they came, the police left. Phoebe waving them goodbye as they shuffled out the front door. But just as the last of officer was leaving, they hung at the threshold, hesitating. The officer said uh, they were worried for Phoebe. They didn't know if her father had been targeted. No, most likely was. 
Within her father's possessions had been letters between her own father and that of a man named Isaac Wright, her grandfather. Letters with an address. The officer told her that she couldn't live here anymore, that she should find her grandfather and live with him, in that town named Edgefield. And with that, the last officer quietly shuffled away into the receding sun. Phoebes stood there in the store and, well, she didn't do much of anything for a while. But as she stood and the sun set with the door still wide open, the cold blustery air continued to drop the temperature of the room. Phoebe thought to do something. She shut the front door and went to go find the letters from her grandfather. See, you could also call the game Letters from Her Grandfather. Oh, but that wouldn't be very good. Edgefield. Edgefield. What have we got? A small village on the edge of the map. Some people moved to town, such as this for the glory, for the start of their grand adventure into the untamed wilderness. For Phoebe, it was something quite more out of necessity. With her father gone, the pawn shop could not go on, so she left it there and set off. And here she stood, with just her bag and a few of her personal belongings. The town from her grandfather's letters. You gonna keep staring, or what? said Fanny. Fanny, the general store proprietor, had agreed to show Phoebe her grandfather's house, what with it being on the outskirts of town. Cool mushroom. It ended up being a bit of a hike, her grandfather's property being about 20 minutes being about a 20 minute walk through the endless fields. Phoebe! No, no, I'm done. She didn't mean to get off on the wrong foot with Miss Fanny. That word means different things in different countries. She meant to keep up with her and keep her head down. Good ways to stay out of the way, she knew. But Phoebes had never seen so much and had a very hard time of simply not staring. Stare all you want, staring's free. I mean, maybe not other people, but you know, if you want to stare at a field, go right ahead. Instead, she did, as the two finally came up on an old-looking building, jutting out of the dusty fields above them. I'm loving this haze effect. I've never seen that in a game before. Like a VN. VN short visual novel. I speak the lingo. Her grandfather's farmhouse. This is giving me a little Ghostbusters afterlife vibe. Fanny quickly strolled on and knocked once, twice, and the silence drew on and on. Are you sure your grandfather was expecting you? Um, he had written letters to my father. Phoebe just stood looking at the other woman, unsure of what exactly she was supposed to say next. Unspoken. In response, Fanny gave one final knock on the door before moving to open it. It wasn't locked. The two of them walked inside, Phoebe more hesitant than the other. Inside, cobwebs and dust. No one had been here for a long time. Well, look at this. Maybe he kicked it while working in the fields. Fanny gave her the look of a smile, but for what Phoebes wasn't sure. What was she supposed to say to that? We saying nothing, but our lips are moving. Normally with games, the problem is the characters aren't animated enough. This is one of the few times where I think the mouth's moving a bit too animated. As for her own response, Phoebe stood there in the threshold of the door, taking it all in. Well, the bed is... the bed's floating? That's interesting. I love the colour palette as well. Like, I realise now it's quite green, almost luminescently so. She'd been hoping that once she found her grandfather, things could go back to being routine. Hmm. When was the last time you heard from the man? My father? Um, he had written him a few months ago. Well, whatever. Congrats there. Uh, what did you say your name was? Phoebe. But you can call me Phoebes. Phoebes! Welcome to your new home. See, we like Fanny. Well, I never thought I'd say that out loud. <laughs> or think it. Now, don't forget to drop by all Fanny's sack for anything you forgot to bring with you. I might even give you a housewarming discount. Maybe. But anyway, nice to meet you. Welcome to town. Blah blah. I've got stuff to do. So, bye. Clearly not a woman to waste words. Fanny strode out and slammed the door behind her, leaving Phoebe in the dim farmhouse room. She looked around and around. What was she to do now? Ever since her father died, he had told her to mind the store, but there was no store left to mind. What was she to do? Standing there, looking around, she decided to... Oh. Oh, we've got options. I'm shocked. Oh, look in the mirror. Phoebe could see herself in the mirror. Her skin looked smooth. Oh. Uh, 
She checked her ointments. She had plenty of her lotion left. Hmm. Window? A family picture where her father used to stand. The image had been ripped. Phoebe tried to imitate the smile on the little girl's face. Pretty close. Oh. I like this date format of just having like one XXXX because it's like we know it's the first entry but also we haven't we don't have to date the game it's quite clever I can't believe him why is he so obsessed with these dogs we've already perfected them why not start on something new oh god an odd little thing to write down I had to hide my imported text from him in the basement his eyesight is bad enough he won't find unless it's directly under a light oh hmm Heaven knows how he keeps working down here. I guess if you found a rhythm, you don't need much light to know where everything is. Whatever, let him make his same dogs day in and day out. I'll make something different. I'll surpass him. I just know it. Ooh. Third entry. She's getting worse. I can't remember what her mother had. Some lung defect? I probably should have asked her for more information before she died. Oh. I talked to Isaac about using my new research to form a new lung. He spent he's set on making another dog. What use would she be to us then? At least my way she'll keep her form. And even if it doesn't work out, at least we'll have good data out of it. Are we some sort of weird clay dog human thing? That's interesting. Entry five. Appropriate human subjects are so hard to find, especially with Isaac's meddling. What a waste. Episode six. Entry six. It was an accident with the old sheriff. Isaac is talking about adjusting the serum levels to make them more amiable to orders. Hmm. But they'll lose their forms during the day. What use is a dog if they're only there for like 12 hours a day? I keep pushing him to reconsider my theories. He's too scared, too set in his ways. Some men will embrace monotony and rhythm to avoid the unknown. No truth can ever be unveiled without some risk. What an idiot, underlined. That's pretty cool that they've gone to the effort of like... The devs has gone to the effort of like underlining a word. And what a good looking underline it is as well. The new sheriff is arriving next week. Isaac said his name was Hugh. Maybe he'll agree with me. Maybe we can steer this town in the right direction with our magical dog science creatures. Cowards, all of them. This town is doomed. They just can't see it. I'm not going to let them keep me here. I'll take her with me. We can bring the ingredients with us. Look at all the blood on this page, or stain on this page. They don't know yet, but they've just made a massive mistake. Hmm. Alright. Well, I can't say I understood any of that. Oh, time's passing as well. This game has got a lot going on. Okay. Check the bed. Sleep. Oh. No. No. It's under the bed. A door on the floor. A large padlock preventing it from being opened. Hmm. Oops. Let's let's go outside, I guess. As the front door softly shut behind her, Phoebes took a look out the farm out at the farm that stretched before her. Silence and fields as far as the eye can see. Again she felt that strange feeling, that emptiness. She never felt like this with her father. She must find grandfather so that she could stop this, so she could stop this feeling. So she just takes orders. Is it because she's a dog? She's a dog in human form, made out of clay, by these farmers who somehow have mastered a type of genetic engineering that has eluded the rest of us with our billion dollar labs. What a terrible, horrible feeling. Oh man, so many options. Let's go to the fields. There is a large open field before her. If she wanted to, Phoebe could plant some things here. She had never done anything of that sort in her father's store, but with a little work and patience, perhaps she could learn to do this. Yes, in case grandfather comes back. Water seeds every day in order for plants to grow. You can buy more seeds at Fanny's general store. Sell or gift your veggies. What? Okay, we don't have any seeds. We've got an inventory. Genius! Okay, um... She opened the door to the barn and moved inside. Slow drifting clouds of dust covered the floor, covering... covered the floor, covered the windows. The air was thick with disuse and the stench of animals that once called this home. But it was empty, lonely, it made Phoebe sad for some reason. She decided to keep exploring. Oh, I'm running out of... okay. okay. Maybe we can get animals later in the game. That's cool. This is not just a visual novel. This has actually got, like, gamey elements. 
it's not a dig of visual novels. Like I've really come around to really loving visual novels, but there's no denying on the interactivity scale, they're very low. Oh my, oh no, so much stuff. I'm loving, I'm loving how the scenery kind of chain, like is moving slightly. It's very nice. Uh oh. I need, I desperately need a map, really. I'm not going to remember all of this stuff. A small settlement with only a handful of buildings lining the main village square, and the few villagers she saw, she saw kept their heads down and none greeted her. Best for her, especially if someone might happen to recognise her face. Well, let's take a quick tour, regardless. Phoebe walked into the establishment adorned with the sign, Old Fanny's Sack. And just who would she see upon entering? Well, Old Fanny herself, of course. Oh. Her and a store, a stern-looking man who is currently glaring at her. Q. The new sheriff. Last warning, Fanny. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Hmm, yeah, yeah. If you pull this heck again, you won't have a use for those pretty coins of yours. And tell me, sheriff, who's keeping those dogs of yours fed? Hmm? You kill me and your next trader might ask a few too many questions. Oh. This is your last warning. Yeah, you're welcome. Phoebe stood by the door. She was used to being quiet and out of the way, but perhaps now she ought to make sure someone knew, make sure they knew she was there. She let out one quiet cough. The man turned around on her, his face filled with fury. Who the heck are you? Oh hey, it's the girl with the dead father and grandfather. Well, probably dead grandfather. Phoebe, right? Yes. It's nice to meet you again, Miss Fanny. And, um... She turned to the fury-filled man. His face hadn't changed an inch since he first rounded on her. Mr. Nothing gets in or out, Fanny. Yeah, yeah, but she arrived before you gave me that last morning. So she's in. Everything else is locked. Okay, this is... this. We're getting to the horror part of the game now. This is, like, kind of scary. Um, oh, don't mind him, Phoebes. He won't introduce himself to you. Phoebe smiled at that nickname. It was good to keep customers happy, but if they tried too hard to get into your good graces, they might try to fleece you out of something, or so her father had said. He's Hugh, the sheriff. You know, out here we don't have police officers and stuff, so we get him, the leader, so to speak. Enough. You, stay out of our way. That translates to, welcome to our town, by the way. Yes. Uh, having Fanny as just kind of like... Uh, a little bit of, I'm not saying comic relief, but just to kind of provide an element of lightness to the game is genius. Great character, great place for a character. He shot one final glare at Fanny and then walked out the door. Phoebe stood where she had stayed the entire conversation, back against the far wall, with her friendly smile on her face. Hmm, well now you've met everyone of import in the town. Hope you weren't itching to make friends. We don't got any of those around here. But I have things you can buy to stave off the lack of friendly relations. See? Great little system I've got going here, if I do say so myself. Oh, that sounds nice. Ha, huh, what a sweet little girl. Phoebe excused herself and decided to head, head home. Oh. Phoebe closed the door behind her and noticed the sun on the horizon. Was it that time already? In the town square with a few villagers each racing around, shuttering their windows and doors. She walked closer to them, unsure just what it was they were doing, when one of them ran into her. Oh, I'm sorry, villager. What the heck are you doing? The sun is setting. Oh, is it? I don't recognize you. Are you one of the replacements for last month's casualties? Um, I mean, that's not what you want villagers to say to you. Gah, no one ever trains the new recruits. Some of the dogs got out. They go berserk at night. You gotta be asleep before 8 p.m. or else you'll die. Dogs? A bell chimed from up above, the gongs echoing all through the town. I hate fresh recruits. Just go to sleep before it's too late. He ran off with that, leaving Phoebe standing all alone in the square. Oh no. Alright, I will do that. She began her trek back to her grandfather's farm, picking her way through the countryside. Howling. It was a shame she had to go inside because Phoebe found the countryside at night quite stunning. All around her, little fireflies lit up the fields. One of my favourite moments. 
of the last few years was I was on a bike ride and I was going through I rode like a bike trail through Missouri um, along the Missouri River and so it wasn't just through Missouri it's through a bunch of states in the United States and um, you're allowed to like camp at various spots and there was this one little town I want to say village but it's more of a town I think do they have villages in America it was a town all right it's this little town on this bike bike path it was a converted train line so the gradient was really really shallow which was very nice and it was like you got to this town after like your leg of the the trip and and it was like just call the sheriff and let them know that you're camping in the in the local park and you can stay for a night for free and i was like excellent yes and so i like <laughs> had reception on my phone for once which was amazing and i'm like i ring and like this person answers and they're like what and i'm like oh hello i'm a bike rider and i i'm i'm here to i'm just going to sit up in my tent in the park i'll be gone in the morning and there's like silence and it was a bit like this horror game just silence 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 and I'm like okay and then I hung up so i set up my tent but then and then i went to like a dive bar and we sang like country western songs so it was a very authentic american experience um i left my ex back in texas what a great song that is right um yeah but then just as it was starting to get dark or just after dusk or around dusk i heard these little popping noises i look out the tent surrounded by fireflies and i didn't really know they were real like you see them in cartoons but you never see them see them and so just to be like just randomly be in the middle of a field of fireflies for a night it was really special because they're quite beautiful anyway i'm pro firefly that's what i'm saying she never stopped to look but she did gaze uh, but she did gaze out to the horizon enjoying the view as much as she could just as she rounded the hill and her grandfather's farmhouse came into view the last of the sun rays left the horizon her grandfather's farm stood before her and, uh, and an overwhelming loneliness overtook her oh. again a howling in the distance she remembered the villagers word of warning to her yeah how could you forget that warning like the, literally the villager was like you've got like five minutes to get to sleep or else dogs will tear you apart and also you're a kilometer from home you wouldn't forget that i'm just saying to me it would be at the forefront of your mind be asleep before 8 p.m what time was it she ran into the farmhouse shutting the door behind her she gripped her fingers in her hands after today things would go back to normal would return to their familiar routine she went to bed thinking these thoughts and more some hmm. save progress yes that's us we're gonna save yes okay I'm back no the night was long and full of terrors john snow i mean filled with fretful sleep and echoes of howling in the night at one point she had heard the barn door give a horrifying rattle she thought to check it but decided to investigate in the morning very wise dogs indeed she didn't know how many there had been but certainly enough to cause a problem she applied her lotion to her skin at <laughs> yeah that was the signs of the lambs faux pas she applied her lotion to her face to her hands in the mirror checking her skin for any cracks and then went about her day because she's made of clay she's like a clay dog in human form um oh oh right that's that's us okay oh man the clock is really the clock's really clicking isn't it oh, all right um i want to let's go up the hill oh, there's so many different paths oh question mark nothing nothing this way fishing we don't have a fishing rod okay this is um I don't I haven't really played much Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley or anything but I'm getting those kind of vibes. It's pretty cool. So we're going this way. Going this way. 
Oh. There's a scruffy looking hooligan here. There. From where she was standing, Phoebe thought she could see a few fleas jumping from their jacket. Ugh. She left them alone. That was the other thing about my bike ride, is there are ticks in America. Mm. They're these little bugs that just, they're like leeches, but like bugs. Oh, best leave them alone. Johnny's sack? Oh, Fanny's sack. What's this? All right, we'll try this place. Oh. Oh, it's the sheriff's town, sheriff's hut. Something. Talk to him. There's a little bit like... Are we off the screen a little bit? Ah, there we go. Okay. Talk to him? We don't have anything to give. Hugh. Hmm? You again. If you have no bus business here, get out. Uh, can we give him something? No, nothing. Hmm. Then don't waste my time. Gee, there's a lot of efforts going on in this game. Okay, if this is anything like Animal Crossing, then Fanny's going to give us a job. Um, donate, talk to her, buy something. We don't have any. We don't have any money. We have nothing to sell. Oh hey, it's Phoebes. I'm sure you need some more seeds, right? Yeah, we do, but we don't have any. We don't have any. Ca oh. Uh, with what money? Yeah. Buy something. Buy something. Okay. We need money, but I just don't know how we're going to get money. Um, talk to you again? There's a scruffy looking hooligan here? Yep. Yep. She left him alone. Hmm. We can't get fish. We can't get money. Farm, seeds, barn. Phoebe opened the barn door to investigate the noise from the other night. Ah, the building had been empty the first day she had been here. It was no longer. Phoebe saw a figure at the back of the barn, hunched over. Instinctively, she moved forward to get a closer look. When the figure moved, she saw eyes, orange-red eyes, that looked straight out at her from that shadowy mass. It moved, and she froze in fright, rooted to the spot. One step, and two, until it strode closer and into a ray of sunlight drifting in from a broken window. It was a man, holding a gun in his hand. I mean, I'm not quite sure where the queer themes in this game are coming from just yet. Um, I mean, I'm happy that there's a few kind of hot angry men in it, but I don't think that that does, to me, what's Phoebe getting out of it, you know what I mean? But more than that, Phoebe noticed the painful grimace on his face. Look at those little little bicep showing. He was young, perhaps the age that Phoebe was supposed to be. Oh. He looked at Phoebe for a second. See? The age that Phoebe was supposed to be? I tell you, clay dog. Dog made out of clay. A golem. That's the word. Two. An unreadable look in his eyes. Um, hello. He took one more step forward and then stopped and took a step back. The gun was still tight in his grip. Peyton, who are you? I am Phoebe. I am the Phoebe. His eyes darted around the room, looking behind her. Where is Isaac? You mean my grandfather? I do not know. I am looking for him. That scowl of his looked quite awful. Phoebe wondered if he was in some sort of pain. So you don't know where he is? No. We don't either. Nobody knows. I came here because father is dead. Dead? He took a few moments and stared at her face. Slowly, his shoulders angled back down. Phoebe didn't know why, but the mood in the room suddenly felt lighter. Well, that's a surprise. Scary message. Oh. Oh. Um. Alright, I'm going to pause it for a second. Yeah, sorry about that. Just got a message that I could not ignore. Um, <laughs> yes, it's a strange times here in Melbourne because we have, um, we have local councils that run the local libraries and a lot of them have, um, drag story time and have had, had it for quite a few years, but 
we've got a noisy um, noisy group of, I guess, we're calling them Nazis, um, just threatening the councils over these story time events. And so the councils one by one have been cancelling them, saying we can't guarantee the safety of the librarians, which is completely, you know, I mean, that's um, completely understandable in a way, like in a way, because like, it's not, if you're a manager, it's not your job to change the world, I reckon. It's your job, it's to look after your people. Got more replies, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute, I'm going to pause it once again. I'll come back, which I'll, I will continue the story if I remember when we come back. Okay, zip. zip. All right, perfect. P seamless. Um, yeah, so, you know, the library's been cancelling these gigs, and um, I guess people are a bit, like, a little bit worried because it's like, oh, we can't just be our, like, you know, I don't know what it all, all means, you know what I mean? It's like... Are we safe? Uh, like, are drag queens safe? Like, people who play drag, are they safe? Or, um, also, why aren't, why are, why are we allow letting threats kind of control our lives a bit? Like, I know it's very confusing. So, anyway, there's a lot of chatter about it at the moment this week. Um, yeah, just people trying to get to the bottom to it. I guess, you know, it's, a, it's not actually complicated. It's, it's not a complicated thing at all. So, actually, uh, part of me is just kind of still just completely perplexed as why this is even a thing. You know, like what possible objection do people have to it? But, oh look, you know, as soon as you start to unpick it, it just it just gets more and more tangled. And it gets more and more kind of like perplexing and unpleasant and worrying. So, all we can do is be ourselves, I guess, and be public. And one another reason why we play these games, these queer games, you know, and do it on stream is just being visible is really itself a really important thing to do. More messages. There we go. Okay. I think that's done. Oh, nope. Still going. Uh, yes. Wait a minute. I'm going to reply to this on stream. Yep. In. I'm going to say I'm in a meeting. So my friend who's sending, sending me messages, and he was like, ever sees this, not that he ever will. <laughs> I, said, I, t I just told him that I'm in a meeting, <laughs> but actually I'm playing games. <laughs> um, all right. Unfortunately, we only have like 30 minutes for a game because we do have to move on, and we are bumping up against that, but I, I feel like I've stolen a little bit of time from... Uh, a heart of butter blue. I feel like we've stolen a little bit of time from it for my little shenanigans. So we're going to give it another minute or two. Um, try and leave it in a good spot. He was looking at her with an odd look in his eyes. He kept glances to her sides, almost as if waiting for her to do something. The gun was limp in his hand, but Phoebe simply stared at the man. Yes? Finally, his eyes shot back to hers, apparently finished waiting for Phoebe to act. I'm sorry to hear about your father. Suppose he can't continue on his work then? No. I had to close down the pawn shop. Pawn shop? He ran a pawn shop? Um, yes. I always do get that word mildly confused with prawn. You know, those little sea creatures that you eat? Because I find a prawn shop infinitely more interesting than a pawn shop. Anything else? What about his uh, research? You know, Project Phoebe. Did he ever? Did anything ever come out of Project Phoebe? You know, where he was trying to create a human daughter out of clay and dog, a clay dog. You know, Project Phoebe. Um, no, never heard of it. Payton. Hmm. I'm sorry. Is there, is there something wrong? No, it's. Uh, hmm. He scratched his head for a few minutes, not saying a word. That's a very long time to be scratching your head. Phoebe simply waited for him to continue. He was used to this. Her father used to fall into long periods of silence, after all. And then, at the end of this uh, indeterminate period of silence, he put the gun away. The name's Peyton. Peyton Place. He held out his hand. He held his hand out? Pe Phoebe looked at it. It's nice to meet you. Sorry about camping in your barn. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Sorry about camping in your barn. His hand was still out in front of him. He slowly let it drop. Um, it is good meeting you. So, uh, you're Isaac's granddaughter? Do you know when he'll be back? No. Ah, I see. I take it you don't know much about... He doesn't finish his thought. Um, I'm here to assist. In that case, will you let me know if you find him? 
Yes, of course. Ah, hmm. So, uh, you aren't going to mention the gun? Hmm, why would I? He looked around, scratching his head again. In the silence that stretched between them, Phoebe simply looked around. She wanted to give this man space to figure out his words. She understood what that felt like. Her eyes landed on a sack that was propped up against the far wall. What looked like clothes spilled out of the top. Those are yours? Yeah, I didn't know anyone else was still living here. They aren't. I'm in the house, said Alfred. I didn't mean here. I didn't know anyone was still living on the farm. Well, I suppose now they are, if you count me. But no one is living in the barn, if you would prefer to stay in your current lodgings. What? You're letting me stay here? Um, there's no need to change the current scenario, not on my behalf. You are looking for my grandfather, correct? If you stay here, you'll be closer to when he returns, to continue your business with him. Ah, there, this this is what she'd been looking for. Routine. Familiarity. Ugh. It made sense to Phoebes to continue to do what work she'd done with her father. Now for her grandfather. This man was a customer of her grandfather, after all. I guess you can say that. Very well. When my grandfather returns, I will inform him that he has a customer waiting on him. Wait, no, don't do that. Just let me know when you find him. Don't tell him about me. Um, because... A painful look before... Yeah, he had a gun and was waiting for your grandfather. Hmm. Phoebe didn't understand this man. Why was he in such pain? Is it because he's made out of clay? Very well. He looked at her oddly. Anything else? Uh, what? Is there anything else you're in need of? What are you talking about? Offering my services to you. You are a guest, and I would like to be honoured of to be of assistance. Phoebe, we just met. Indeed we did. You shouldn't offer your services to strange men you just met. Oh, very well. He sighed again. That look of pain was back on his face. And then, under his breath, What a strange girl. I can hear you. Okay, it's like, okay, we've got a bit of a... She's a bit of a golem, I guess, looking for, uh, looking for commands. If I'm not to offer my services to you, then I see no purpose in continuing this conversation. I will go back to, uh... She paused, unsure of how to describe what it, had she, what it was she'd been doing before. Um, walking around. Sounds riveting. I'll leave you to it. Okay. Uh, and we will save it there. Oh. Options. Character speed. Hmm. Oh. We can't save it. What we really need is money. We need money, people. There's nothing to be planted here. Oh, we'll go back into the house. There's got to be something. A door on the floor. Yep, that's the padlock. Checked her ointments. Plenty of ocean left. Let's see herself in the mirror. Skin looks smooth. Alright, let's sleep. Hopefully save it. Yes. Ooh. Yep. Okay. To title. That's us. Yes, yeah, so this is the brown screen I was talking about. Okay, well. There we go. That was... <laughs> For some reason, my brain is just rejecting this game title. A Heart of Butter Blue. Um... Intriguing. I think we met a lot of the characters, but we didn't really progress their story that much. That's the problem of just giving it a half hour, is you, we only really get to scratch the surface. Um, so if you are looking for a game to play, I think this would be a fabulous one to pick up, because I can tell there's a lot more meat to come um, in that in that story. Uh, and a lot of quite a lot of threads. A very, very sympathetic main character. Like, I already really feel very protective towards Phoebe. Like, you can just tell that she's in for, um, you know, she needs protecting, that one. Um, something I've thought was really interesting about this game, like super, super interesting, was it, it was kind of like a visual novel, um, but it had these other, um, this, this whole sort of night-day cycle um, and an economy component to it, farming and all that stuff. Uh, and I think... That was clearly a lot of work, like a lot, a lot of work. And I kind of want to know what they programmed it in, because uh, it, it didn't quite look like RenPy. Uh, if it was RenPy or some other visual novel framework, I think they really must be contorting it to add the, like the navigation and to add the farming and to add the shop and everything. Um, 
to the point where I'm almost like they've gone to all this effort, I almost wish they had sort of dropped, sort of toggled it a bit more into the, like a point and click genre or a, um, you know, like a little RPG thing, like an RPG maker or something. Cause it's clearly the one of those elements in there. And I don't, I don't know if they completely translate into a visual novel very well, but, um, we didn't really get an opportunity to explore that cause we had no money, which is, uh, you know, I'm sure if you're into queer games, you're probably familiar with that feeling. All right. Thank you very much for joining me here on queer games. Heck yeah. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.